How's it going everyone? Ben here from Augment Guitars and welcome to the first part of a multi-part series about how I built my DIY basement spray booth. So in this first episode, we're pretty much gonna be constructing the whole thing and I'm gonna be going into the supplies and fixtures I used in the process. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's take a look at the shell that I'm working with. I bought this 60 by 36 by 72 inch U-line storage rack online for about $285. I went with a particle board variation as the shelves were going to be covered up anyways. It will be plenty strong enough for this application. The first thing we are going to do is frame in the panels. I'm using a few 8 foot by 4 foot by half inch sanded plywood panels that I purchased from my local Home Depot. To cut the panels to the right dimensions, I will be using this Craig track saw in combination with this 8 foot by 2 inch thick insulation board. This allows me to cut right into the insulation foam without worrying about hitting the floor or awkwardly cutting these pieces on workhorses. It works out pretty great. I cut all of the pieces for the main spray booth box first. To attach them to the frame, I use these inch and a quarter truss head wood screws in combination with these 1 inch washers for added support. After verifying they fit, I pulled them out and put a few coats of paint on the exposed panels. I used bare premium cabinet, door, and trim enamel in the satin finish. This stuff went on nice and easy and it really only took one coat. I did a second coat just to ensure all the wood was covered. After the panel was dry, I installed all three of them back into the booth. To seal the sides and add support, I cut out these support pieces that measure the length of the panels and are about 4-5 to five inches tall. To seal up the cracks, I used this DAP Alex Latex Caulk. I would use a higher quality caulk than this, as this ended up cracking pretty easily. Don't cheap out, but don't get the really expensive stuff. I attached the panels with some 3 quarter inch truss head wood screws. Now that the back is sealed, let's cut some more panels out. The next set of panels we are cutting out are for the lower storage compartment. For all of these sections, I based the dimensions around my height. Since I am on the shorter side, I had the main booth a little lower to ensure I can comfortably spray. Let me give you a rundown of the height of each section. The main booth compartment is about 28 inches tall and sits about 34 inches from the ground, including the casters. The top storage compartment is 17 inches tall, and the lower, soon to be drawer compartment, is 22 inches tall. The width of all three of these areas are the same, and they measure about 58 inches wide. I painted the storage compartment panels, and this booth has finally taken shape. Let's start working on the main booth compartment now. I took off the topmost particle board shelf, as we need to cut out a channel that leads into the airbox. I made some markings showing the shelf edges to help give me a base around where I need to cut. I made the channel about 6 inches tall, going almost the full length of the shelf. Let's drill a pilot hole and cut it out with a jigsaw. This doesn't need to be perfect as no one will ever see it. I mean, my cut sure wasn't. After I made the cut, I reinstalled it back into the top shelf. For the primary filter, I used this 36 inch by 30 foot accordion polyback baffle. This filter is about two inches thick and will take care of any of the large to medium sized particles. It has a primary cardboard filter as well as a secondary polyester backing filter. It comes in 30 foot lengths, so it'll last you for a long time. To hold the filter in place, I am using these aluminum drywall corner beads. When you combine two of them together, it is the perfect size to hold the filter in place. Be careful when working with these as the ends are very sharp and will cut you. Wear gloves. We will be attaching them with some half inch truss head wood screws. I placed the filter frame about 6 inches away from the back of the booth. This lines up with the channel I cut out previously. And you can see this channel and how it will connect the main booth to the airbox. Now that both corner beads are installed, let's test out the filter fit. I cut the filter so it properly stretched out the accordion so air can easily pass through.
Before fully installing the filter, we need to tackle some other tasks, so let's remove it for now. I cut out some more half-inch plywood pieces to create a frame on each side of the spray booth area. This is where our power cables will run through for the lights and the fan. You can see I used some black duct tape here, but I later changed to aluminum duct tape for a better seal. Before sealing all of the corners, I added some caulk, let it dry, and then taped up all the cracks and corners. We want an airtight seal for the booth and the airbox. Now that we have a frame on each side, it's time to install the panels. I used this 8th inch melamine flex board, which I do not recommend. I thought this would work great, but it was a giant pain to deal with. It is heavy, too flexible, and doesn't drill and attach well. I recommend just getting thin plywood for the panels. We will be covering it up with booth paper anyways. I attached the panels to some more half inch wood truss head screws. Hey, it finally looks like a spray booth. To install the accordion filter, I used these door hinge pins that I purchased at Lowe's. These are the perfect size to fit into the pre-drilled holes in the drywall corner bead frame. I reinforced the edge of the filter with some painter's tape and punched a few holes in the filter to accommodate the door hinge pins. These hold the filter in place and they're easy to remove for filter changes. Let's shift gears and work on the airbox. I cut out panels for the sides as well as these small support pieces to hold the secondary filter in place. I attach them with some 3 quarter inch truss head wood screws and these sit about an inch away from the airbox opening. The secondary filters I use for the booth are from FilterBuy. They're an HVAC filter and they measure 14 by 36 by 1 and they rate at a MERV 13 rating. This means they trap about 98% of the airborne particles which filters down to about 0.3 to 1 microns. I cut the filters so two of them could fit side by side to each other. I taped at the ends to reinforce them as I cut away some of the cardboard support material. The filters fit snug as the small support pieces keep them from moving around. The airflow is also pushing the filter against these supports. The airbox is coming along nicely, but the rest of the design depends on the exhaust fan that you choose. I chose this 12 inch Vervor explosion proof exhaust fan that I purchased on Amazon. This fan puts out about 2700 CFM and is fully explosion proof so it can exhaust the flammable coatings and VOCs we will be spraying. It is ATEX approved, which isn't really relevant in the US, but in Europe it has been fully tested and approved for hazardous explosive atmospheres. It is also 110 volts, which will save me money as I don't have to run 220 volt power. To connect the fan to the duct system, we need to install a 12 inch to 8 inch duct reducer. We will do this by taking off the protective blade covers and using the supplied screws to attach the reducer. We will need to drill some holes for this. There's one problem with what I'm currently doing though, and I pay for it later. I'm installing the reducer to the wrong side. This is the intake side, so if you get this fan, be sure to do this to the opposite side that I'm showing right now. The process is the same, because both sides use the same blade guard. Don't wait until after it's installed to check the fan direction. Let's install the reducer and ensure it is fully seated by tapping it with a rubber mallet. We don't want to bend any of the collars. I then reinstalled the screws and used some blue Loctite on the threads as I don't want these vibrating loose. I also torqued them down pretty tight for the same reason. Now that we have the fan duct reducer installed, we can see where we need to cut out the hole for the exhaust duct work. I positioned the fan so that the legs are touching the filter side supports and I traced around the duct collar. Let's remove the panel so we can cut out the hole. I measured the center point of the trace circle and made a mark. We will be using a hole saw to cut out the circle, but first we need to drill out the pilot hole. I will be using this 8 inch hole saw that I purchased from Amazon to cut out the hole. This thing is a beast, and we need to be careful when using it as we don't want to hurt ourselves. When using the saw, ensure to brace your hand in the drill against your leg so if it kicks back, it doesn't jerk your wrist. Whew, glad that's over. A quick test fit of the panel and the fan shows that the hole is the perfect size. After slapping a few coats of paint on the panels, it's time to add in a seal from the fan reducer to the external duct hose. We will be using this 8 inch duct collar that has an adhesive foam sealing gasket on it. This will ensure all air leaves through the duct and doesn't leak out. I also added a few half inch pan head screws for more support. 
We will connect the fan reducer and the duct collar using some aluminum duct tape. Now that we know the fan placement, we can install the back airbox panel. I set it a few inches past the fan housing so it's a tight fit in the airbox. This also gives us more room for storage at the front top of the booth. I installed the panels with these small angle brackets that I also purchased from Lowe's. After all the panels and brackets were installed, I went ahead and sealed up the airbox using the same caulk and tape method as before. Now that we have the airbox sealed, we need to install a door for the back panel. I cut out another sheet from half inch plywood and gave it some paint. I will be using these 1024 threaded inserts to install and remove the back panel. I wanted a solution that didn't involve wood screws as this panel will be off and on many times when I need to change these filters. I installed the threaded inserts to some support pieces and glued them in using wood glue. I then used the machine screws and a ferrule to securely attach the panel. I also added a bit of sealing foam to the bottom and top support pieces for a better seal. Along with this, I added aluminum duct tape to the exhaust fan and the installed filter seams. After I ensured everything was good to go, I put the back panel on and sealed all of the edges with more aluminum duct tape. Now that the airbox is finished up, let's line the booth with some Chemco Flame Retardant booth paper. I purchased this 36 inch by 300 foot roll from Filtration Group Finishing. It was a bit pricey at about $144, but well worth the price for fire prevention. I will be attaching it with some double stick tape. Let's cut up the paper for the panels. I tried to use thumbtacks to attach the paper, but the metal mead board was just too dense and was bending them. Trust me, don't use this stuff. Just use thin, softer plywood sheets. After I finished lining the booth, I connected up the duct hose. I'm using this flexible 8-inch hose that I purchased from Amazon. I decided to go with a flexible hose as when I need to change the filter, I have to move the spray booth. I would have to disconnect the fixed hose to do so, which is a pain. The only downside to the flex hose is that it eats up some of your CFM due to the ridges inside of the hose. All right, I just wanted to take a second to pause here and say that I'm not gonna be showing any of the ducting or electrical work that I did to my house um, to get this booth working. So uh, this video was just for demonstration purposes. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you to hire licensed professionals to do any of this work if you wanna tackle your own spray booth, um, just to make sure you're, you're meeting local codes and you're doing things safely. So uh, I'm not liable for any damages to you or your house or anything if you decide to tackle a spray booth build just like mine. So do things safe, do things right, hire professionals. Now, with that out of the way, Let's work on the spray booth doors. I cut out a few three quarter inch thick plywood panels for the booth and storage area doors. I wanted these to be sturdier than the rest of the panels as I will be opening and closing them a lot. A quick test fit shows the top storage area doors are a perfect fit. Now let's attach them using some hinges. For the hinges, I will be using these three and a half inch non mortise hinges that I purchased from Lowe's. These hinges are great because they lock into each other creating a tighter fit to the booth rack. Additionally, we will be using some brushed chrome drawer pools that I also purchased from Lowe's. I lined up and attached the hinges flush with the side of the door. I had to use smaller screws for this as the supplied ones were a bit too long. You can see how these hinges lock into each other creating a tighter fit. I installed the door so that it was even on both the top and the bottom of the booth racks. It's nice and even and closes smoothly. Let's repeat the process for the next door.
With both doors installed and lining up perfectly, let's remove them and give them a few coats of paint. With the paint dry, we can now install the handles. For this, I just roughly lined them up, took those measurements, marked the positions with my awl, and then drilled the holes. With both handles installed, we can now easily open and close the doors. All right. If you're wondering how I attach the hinges to the frame, I used a small hard steel drill bit and some oil to drill through the steel frame. It took a bit, but I was able to drill out all of the holes and install the hinges. Let's repeat the process for the main booth doors. And just like that, the doors are in. The last thing to tackle for the doors are the closing systems. I decided to use two different magnetic catching systems for the main booth and storage area doors. For the main booth doors, I drilled out a slight recess to accommodate a large, inch and a quarter rare earth magnet. I did this using a fish forstner bit. Using some epoxy, I installed and clamped in the rare earth magnet until it cured. Before you epoxy this in, double check that the correct polarity is facing the rack. We don't want it pushing away from the door. I decided to add in an adhesive cork strip on top of the magnet. This will help clean up the look as well as soften the door close so it doesn't bang as loud. I cut it into a square to match the door corner. For the top storage compartment, I decided to use a pre-made magnetic cabinet catch. These are super cheap and work great for smaller doors. You can buy them pretty much at any hardware store. I also added a little bit of foam between the two booth doors to fill in the little gap that was there. I was going to try to seal the booth area, but after using it, I don't think it's necessary. And that wraps up this part. So we fully built the booth and it's fully functional, even though you didn't see it in action yet, but that's what the next part's for. So. And the next part, we're gonna be making a guitar workpiece holder out of electrical conduit. It's gonna be pretty cool. I'm also gonna show you the spray setup that I decided to go with. Um, and we're also gonna be spraying some guitars, so you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be more videos like this and more parts to come with a spray booth. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.